Hey, what's up guys? It's Ryan Johnsonus. Welcome back to the YouTube channel. In today's video, we'll be discussing a seduction technique known as the three second rule, or 3SR for short. So, uh, let's get into it. Uh, a little cold outside, a little chilly. It's 42 degrees. I'm heading to my other job right now. This week I'm working at Allegiant Stadium setting up some speakers for the Super Bowl. This gig pays uh, $38 an hour with an eight hour minimum. So it's basically $304 for the day or something like that, some 300 and some change. It was like three days last week, three days this week, and then come back for like three days in February after it's done to take it all down. So the three second rule is a rule that you don't just want to apply, you want to worship the three second rule. That's a good way to remember it. And what the three second rule is, is it basically states that as soon as you see an attractive woman that you want to talk to, you have three seconds to stop whatever the fuck you're doing and move your body towards the girl and approach and open and start the conversation to open the set. A set is a person or a group of people. So if it's like one girl, it would be a one set. If it's two girls, it's gonna be a two set. That might be a girl and her friend. They could both be hot girls. They could be a, a, could be a hot girl and a fat girl. The girl that you like is your target, right? So you give yourself three seconds basically to approach and open the set or your target. In the case of this example, if you guys are new to the game and you have no idea what the fuck I'm talking about, we're gonna keep it very simple. I want you to imagine, picture in your mind the situation that you're at the mall and there's a pretty girl by herself walking by. Maybe she's shopping, maybe she got some new shoes or something like that. She has like a little Gucci bag or something. And you're like, I wanna go, I wanna go talk to her. You know, I wanna ask her out, I wanna fuck, her. right? So you gotta go talk to her. And this is where most guys fail the game right before they even start because they don't have the balls to approach and open the set. You gotta remember this rule first. If you don't open, you will not get the girl. So even before the three second rule, you kind of have to keep this rule in mind, which is if you do not open, you will not get the girl. The girl's just gonna keep walking. So you have to be proactive and you have to force yourself to open the set, even if it makes you a little uncomfortable. So what you wanna do basically, you see the girl, she's walking by, you notice her, and then you just think in your head, oh yeah, Ryan said three second rule, three SR. You might even look at her and you go, okay, I have three seconds. One, two, three, and then you just start walking towards her. And as you're doing that, I would suggest that you be thinking in your head, what am I gonna say to her? What am I gonna say to her? And then if you watch my other videos, like how to start conversations with women, then you will know exactly what to say to her in order to create attraction and get the phone number and then ultimately be able to set up a date and later get the sex. But that's a different portion of the game. I wanna focus right now, I wanna really like take a microscope and focus in on the three second rule. Because if you can't handle this part of your game, if you don't know how to approach, then the rest of the stuff doesn't matter because you'll never get any results. You'll never get the conversation started with the woman. So you have to obey the three second rule. That's just part of the game. If you don't approach, you won't get the girl. Okay, so now that that's covered, I understand that a lot of, you know, you feel a lot of discomfort, a lot of, you know, weird feelings in your body when you see a pretty girl and you want to go approach her, but something in you is holding you back. Where you're like, oh, I don't know, I'm, I'm scared to approach. And basically what you're experiencing is called approach anxiety, or AA for short. If you look at it from a psychological perspective, it's actually called an amygdala hijack. It's like a fight or flight mechanism in your brain that gets triggered. Because you see a pretty girl and you want sex with her, you want to stick your dick in her, you want to fuck her, but at the same time, your brain sees it as a possible threat because of the rejection factor. They have done tests in um, psychology where it shows that rejection, being rejected by people, actually triggers in your brain, even though it's not physical, it's emotional or mental, it actually triggers you like physical pain. And so your body is telling you, I want to approach the girl because if I don't, I won't get sex from her, I won't be able to reproduce or procreate with her, and that could be the end of your genetic lineage. If you don't ever fuck a girl and you don't ever come in her, you're never gonna have children, and um, then basically your genes will be weeded out of existence, and it will be over for you. So that part of your brain is saying, I have to approach her, but the other part of your brain is saying, what if I get rejected? What if everybody laughs at me? What if she says I'm no good? What if she says I'm ugly? I don't know if I can take that kind of rejection. And then that holds a lot of guys in fear, and they never end up approaching, and the girl walks by, and then 
They never see her again. And then of course it's over for you, at least with that girl. That's why if you don't learn how to obey the three second rule, then it will be over for you. You'll never approach and you'll never get laid and you'll be alone by yourself jerking off to Pornhub and uh, yeah, it's over for you. But AA, approach anxiety, they say that it attributed to, if you go back to let's say 100,000 years ago when we lived in tribes of 50 people, there might have been, let's say, 25 men and 25 women. There would have been a leader of the tribe. There would have been like the tribal elders, the leader's friends. And then there would be a few attractive women of breeding age. There would be kids around. And then there would be older people in the tribe, like the, the grandmas and the grandpas that are not of breeding age. And so really, there's only really a couple females that are in that prime SMB, sexual marketplace value. They're in that prime of their life where they're ready to breed and, and procreate and have children. But generally, the tribal leader would have had rights to all of those women, either him or his tribal elders. And if, let's say, you were the low man on the totem pole, you were just one of the hunters, and then you saw like this attractive woman and then let's say you went up to the girl and she rejected you and she told the other females in the tribe, hey, you know, this creepy guy tried to hit on me. And then she goes and tells the tribal elder, basically that, that woman, she might get offended by that. And then she goes and tells the tribal elder. And of course he just grabs his spear and he'll go kill you or have one of his fucking henchmen do it. One of his fucking tribal elders. And then you're dead. So that's why I say a lot of times, picking up women is actually a matter of life and death. So unless you're that high value alpha male of the tribe who can get any woman that he wants and have like claim rights to those, those women, if you're one of the outside people in the tribe, it could literally be death for you. So picking up women, it's, it's no joke. It can be a matter of life and death. Now it's not like that in today's society, but fast forward a hundred thousand years, our evolutionary programming has developed this approach anxiety, this fear of the approach, so that when we see a pretty girl, we want to meet her, we want to approach her, we want to fuck her, we want to procreate with her, but you get that amygdala hijack, that fight, flight, or freeze mechanism, where you're either gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna either push through it and I'm gonna talk to her, I'm gonna fight, or I'm gonna flight, I'm gonna leave, oh no, I can't do it, it's too much, ugh or I'm gonna just freeze, and that's where you're just kinda like standing there looking at her, which happens to most people, because they're like, oh, I wanna talk to her, I wanna talk to her. Go talk to her, man. Oh, I'm too scared. I'm just gonna stand right here and do nothing. And of course, then it'll be over for you. So, the trick to understanding how to get over the approach, by the way, all of this stuff is in my book, How to Pick Up Hot Women. I definitely suggest that you get on Amazon.com and get a copy so that you can learn more about the three second rule and approach anxiety and amygdala hijacks and confidence and all of that stuff is all in the book and it's only six bucks for the Kindle, which is about the price of a coffee. And if you're tired of getting coffee by yourself and you wanna get a girlfriend, go buy the book and learn the secrets. But anyways, one of the best ways to get through the approach anxiety and to actually be able to utilize the three second rule is, um, let's talk about skydiving for a second. Skydiving is scary, but it triggers the same type of response. Imagine you're in a plane and you know, they open up the door and you get that, you know, you're thousands of feet up, it's very cold outside and you're looking down and it's scary. You get a rush of adrenaline and you go, and you're kind of scared. Oh, I don't know, I, I want to jump, but you just have to put your feet out and jump, or if you're doing a tandem jump, then the, uh, the skydiving instructor is shackled to the back of you, and he has the parachute, and he will kind of push you out of the plane whether you're scared or not, which is really kind of very reminiscent of having being a dating coach and having a student that's very you know scared to approach women, and sometimes I have to be there to push them into set and be like, no, no, let's go, let's approach. That's why it's good to have another person with you when you're out at the nightclubs or wherever you want to approach women. And so, you know, with skydiving, you know, you yeah, you feel the fear, but then you do it anyway. You jump out of the plane, and then you pull the chute, and after that, you kind of enjoy the ride. You're like, oh, this isn't so bad. And it's the same thing where it's scary at first when you're looking at the girl, but if you start forcing yourself to walk over there, if you obey the three-second rule, then a couple of seconds into set, that fear just kind of dissipates. It, di it just disappears. And now you're just talking to a pretty girl and having a normal conversation with her, and if you follow what else I teach you, exactly what to do and say, you'll get the girl's phone number and you'll get the date. And eventually you'll get the sex. All of this is just a step-by-step -step process. It's just that you know, right here, this happens to be that first step. And if you don't take that first step towards approaching the girl, then none of the, none of the rest of this will ever happen. And of course it will be over for you. You'll just be fucking standing there like a little bitch staring at the girl like a creeper. 
And you don't want to do that, right? You want to be a man, you want to have some balls, and you want to go talk to the girl. Don't be a little bitch. Grow some balls and go fucking talk to her. And once you do it so many times, it just becomes a normal thing. Now, even thousands of approaches in, like even me, after doing this for almost two decades, you're still going to always feel that fear. It's hardwired into your brain. It's natural for you to fear the approach. That's just part of being a man. Another great metaphor is thinking of a pebble in your shoe. Have you ever walked around and had a pebble in your shoe? Well, it's annoying. It's like, ah, oh, that, that hurts, but it's not going to kill you. And the same thing with you see a pretty girl and you go, oh, I'm kind of scared. All right, I'm going to obey the three second rule. This sucks. I feel the fear and it's annoying me, but you're moving your body. It's not going to kill you. And eventually you walk up to the girl and you open the set. And that's how game works. Oh yeah. Let's talk about the one second rule. This is a variation of the three second rule. It's very much like the three second rule. It's just two seconds faster. So instead of waiting the three seconds, because some guys even count off, they'll be like, okay, I'm going to remember the three second rule. I see the girl. I'm going to count it off. One, two, three. And then they go and approach because it kind of like pumps you up. But then there's the one second rule, which is what I use most of the time where it's like, you don't even think of the three second rule. It's just, you see a pretty girl and you stop what you're doing and you go in and you approach her. There's one more variation that we need to talk about. And that's called the three minute rule, three MR. The three minute rule is very important. This is something that happens a lot, especially in Las Vegas, when you're in a, um, like a casino lobby and there are cocktail waitresses walking around. Anything outside of the set, like let's say you and the girl, anything out here, this is internal, this is external. So if there's a cocktail waitress, she would be considered an external entity or an external intra. Let's say that you're running game on the girl and a cocktail waitress comes in and basically she says, you know, do you want to buy some cocktails or some cigarettes or something like that? And she interrupts a set, That's which is why it's good to have a wingman to basically handle that external interrupt before she ever interrupts you and he can keep her over here so that you can continue running the set. But let's imagine that you haven't approached yet and the girl is starting to walk by. Maybe she's heading to the bar to buy a drink, right? If she's heading straight to the bar and you notice that, you don't want to use the three second rule because all of a sudden now she's ordering a drink at the bar and you will come and approach. This is going to be very fucking weird and creepy because she's trying to get a drink. It's better in that situation to apply the three minute rule. Whereas you say, okay, I know that she is going to buy a drink. Let me wait two or three minutes, she'll get the drink, and then if she's walking away from the bar, then I will approach. And that's a much better way to play the game. That sun is so fucking bright. This way you know that she's over at the bar, right? This way, when she goes to the bar, you say, okay, I know she's gonna buy a drink, let me wait two or three minutes, just kinda keep her in my peripherals or whatever, I'll walk over here, you'll play on the pinball machine or whatever. Keep an eye on her, and when she's done buying the drink in like two or three minutes and she's walking back to a table, that's where you would make the approach. And that's a much better way to play the game. Yo, what up? So, um, I just got off work. I ended up doing 10 hours. It was uh, $418 for the day with the overtime, so that was cool. But um, I was gonna finish the video, but I remembered a very crucial element to the three second rule, and we can't end this video without it. And that element is the concept of analysis paralysis. Okay, so what that basically means, and this is basically the other interesting thing about the three second rule, which it, it does, it prevents analysis paralysis. So let's say, for example, you see a pretty girl. What a lot of guys will do if they don't obey the three second rule is they will go into their head and they'll start analyzing and overanalyzing and basically creating negative situations, circumstances, or events in their head that are all imaginary. You know, reasons for why you shouldn't approach, which basically fucks up your game. So guys will look at the girl and they'll go, well, I want to approach, but I don't really know what to say. Or, oh, uh, shit, I forgot to brush my teeth this morning. Or, oh, I'm not wearing the right shirt. Or what if, what if I walk over there and I trip over my own feet or over a stick and I fall and everybody laughs at me and anyway, while you're creating all these imaginary fake scenarios in your head, meanwhile, the girl is still walking by and you basically psych yourself out of it, analysis paralysis, basically, you overanalyze to the point of paralysis where you can't move, 
and you freeze, which exaggerates the amygdala hijack response, which already has you freezing, and now you're overanalyzing and freezing more. It just fucks up your game. So again, obeying the three second rule basically bypasses that and forces you to just start moving your body towards the girl and open the set. So it will prevent the analysis paralysis from ever happening in the first place. And that, my friend, should cover the basis of the three second rule. I hope that that technique helps you out. Definitely go out and try it, add it into your game. When you see a girl, just remember, Ryan said obey the three second rule, stop what you're doing, don't overanalyze shit, and just start moving your fucking body towards the girl and open the set. Just force your body to move in the direction of the girl, grow some fucking balls, and talk to her. That's the best way to do it. Okay, and fast forward another day. I just finished another day at the at the stadium, and uh, I'm going to the fucking Super Bowl, running spotlight for the actual Super Bowl, and uh, like uh, in a couple of weeks here. But um, <laughs> I forgot another very, very crucial element. It's actually something that I just invented uh, earlier today, actually, uh, because I never had really a way to explain it, but let's call it anxiety threshold. You have to understand that like when you're talking to a woman, there are, no, it's not just like a set level of, oh, I have approach anxiety or I have like that fear of the approach. I have those weird negative feelings of anxiety or jitterness and I'm scared to approach. There's actually different levels of it, right? So depending on basically the level of the person's SMV, sexual marketplace value, dating is a marketplace really, and people that have a higher SMV, like hotter women or hotter guys, have an easier time in the dating world, in the business world, and in life in general. So depending where you're at on the sexual marketplace, right, let's say you're an average looking guy, five out of 10 or something like that, average looks, average salary, right? So you're right in the middle between a one and a 10. And then let's say across the room is a 10 out of 10, perfect prime Giga Stacy. Okay, like the girl is a stunner, she's gorgeous, she's like a supermodel. The amount or the threshold is gonna be all the way at the top because she has a higher SMV than you and therefore it's gonna trigger the most amount of approach anxiety for most guys. They're gonna look at her and they're gonna be literally frightened of approaching her even though they wanna fuck the shit out of her because she's so fucking hot. Whereas, let's say you're a guy who's average looking and it's a fat girl, okay? She's fat, she's old, she's ugly, uh, she's in a wheelchair, she's like a grandma age. She's no one that you would ever want to date fuck or reproduce with. Well, you're not gonna have any approach anxiety approaching that female because there's no attraction there. The difference right there between where you're at and how hot the girl is, that's basically your anxiety threshold. That's, that's gonna be the peak level. And let's say it's an average girl, for example, it's another girl who's a five out of 10. She's very average in looks. She has a very average face. She probably is a little fat, maybe a little chubby. She's not hot but she's not ugly, she's just right there in the middle. She's like a plain Jane, she's a, a, a butter face. Maybe someone that you would use for a pump and dump, you would fuck her, but you would never date her serious. That kind of girl, you'd only have a little bit of approach anxiety. You see her across the room, an average girl, you're like, yeah, I'd fuck her after a couple of beers. If I was there as your coach and I said, well, go talk to her, you might be like, eh, all right. Like you might feel a little nervous, but it wouldn't be that bad and you just walk over and approach her. You'd easily be able to get over that little hump or that little peak of anxiety, you'd be able to handle that and then go in and open the set. Whereas if it's a fucking smoking hot prime giga Stacy, 10 out of 10, you might be freezing. You might be like, oh fuck, like I want to talk to her. Yeah, she's fucking hot, but uh, I don't know, right? Because your anxiety is, is all the way at the top. It's peaking like a, like an audio meter, right? And there's your peak levels where it's in the red, where it's like, well, that's, she, that chick is too fucking hot. I'm scared to approach. Maybe it's in the yellow, like a caution, like a warning where you're like, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know, maybe I need a couple of drinks, right? That's why they call alcohol liquid courage. That's why a lot of guys will say, yeah, I wanna talk to some ladies, but let me get a beer first. Let me get a couple of shots first. Because basically alcohol, liquid courage, it eliminates approach anxiety. All of a sudden you start drinking 
and you're like Superman, you're like an approach machine. And you could literally like, oh yeah, I'll go talk to her, it's not a big deal. Alcohol just makes all your inhibitions disappear. That's why it's so popular in the club. It gets people talking to each other. It's like a social lubricant. It helps move the interaction forward. And so I think altogether, that should cover everything that you need to know about approach anxiety in this video. And so we've talked about approach anxiety. We talked about the three second rule. We talked about the one second rule variation. We talked about the three minute rule variation. We talked about analysis paralysis. We talked about anxiety threshold. We briefly touched on SMV, sexual marketplace value. That's an entirely other video. I would definitely, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would definitely do that right now. Click that subscribe button and there are videos where I talk about that. You can also check out my book on Amazon, How to Pick Up Hot Women, which explains all of this stuff in great detail with charts and graphs and all the scientific data to back up exactly what I'm talking about here. If you need help, and you need more secrets getting over your approach anxiety so that you can really get out there and start approaching hot women. Basically get over that fear of approach and start approaching women, getting phone numbers, getting more dates, and getting laid. Then definitely get coaching with me. There's some fucking idiot that's driving like fucking five miles an hour in front of me. Hit me up on Instagram or hit me up on the iPhone, 702-417-7714. Send me a text or a message. Get in contact with me. We'll figure out exactly what you need to do. I have packages at all different price points. You can get on Zoom. I can teach you the game. I can teach you all of this type of stuff. You'll learn the secrets and you'll be able to get fucking women and get fucking laid. But anyways, guys, I think we covered everything in this video. I'm going to cut this short. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel for more. Leave your comments in the box below. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Good luck and game on, fellas. Peace.